Vanessa English Generation. I hope you're doing amazing starting your 2022 with great vibes and positivity. If you're new to my channel, please look around. Welcome. And if you find value in the content that I upload for you every week, please make sure you support by subscribing, liking, commenting, and of course, sharing. I am very proud to start the year by sharing a very important project with you. I worked on this project for the better part of 2021, and I'm referring to the English translation of Los Acuartelados de San Isidro, which right at the anniversary, because Ro uh, Arsenio Rodriguez Quintana, the author, published this on January 2021, and right on the one year anniversary, the English version is released, and I had the honor, I had the privilege of translating it. I have to tell you, this project is very meaningful to me. The first reason is because these chronicles really shaped my view of the artistic dissidents in Cuba. You have to remember, I came when I was eight years old, and this gave me a better understanding of the events that actually have led to the social uprising that we're seeing on the island today. This gives you a real insider's view of the struggles and all the things that have been happening for the past years. The second reason is because I have felt for a long time that there isn't enough content available in English that is sharing the truth about what goes on in Cuba and it's voicing the real stories of the people within the island. We are finally getting to know what is going on historically with the people that dare speak up against the Cuban regime. The opportunity to team up with Arsenio makes me feel like we're taking the steps to further spread the message to those who have no idea what is going on. There are many people out there wondering what's happening and the information sharing the true voices of the Cuban people, unfortunately, is limited. Now, if you don't know, you're probably wondering who are these people? Who are the quartered of San Isidro? What is the San Isidro movement? Well, basically, in synthesis, short story, San Isidro it became popular. It's, San Isidro is a neighborhood in Cuba, but it became popular after uh, artists and intellectuals from that neighborhood became, came together to protest against Decree 349, which was a law that limited artists. The government not only defined what an artist was and was not, but it also limited their expression when and where they could actually perform their art. One of the members of this group was rapper Denis Solis, who appeared with a sign. Of course, he was arrested and taken to prison. And the people that belonged to the San Isidro movement with him decided to protest to demand his freedom. So they began to perform gatherings and poetry readings artists, intellectuals, poets. And at one point in time, it was prohibited for them to do that, but they still went ahead and did it and decided to quarter themselves in the home of Luis Manuel Otero Alcantara at 955 Damas in San Isidro, a marginalized neighborhood in Old Havana. The police surrounded them. Their cistern water was poisoned and the access to food and supplies was blocked. So because of this, they didn't have enough food and it forced some of them to have to go on a hunger strike in order to be able to survive. These brave young men and women broadcasted via Facebook Live for all the world to see what was going on within that home. They even caught the moment in which the state security came barging in and took them by force. This is something that had never been seen before and it turned all the eyes from the Cubans on the island and off and even non-Cubans toward these Cuban artists. Now, it isn't a surprise that communication in Cuba is very limited. It's controlled by the government, and they even have agencies in the U.S. working to spread the communist propaganda in the United States and develop programs to benefit the dictatorship in order to help it stay in power longer and stronger. So projects like this book help us have tools that are educational, that contain history and valuable information. The Quarter of San Isidro is in chronicle form, so it takes you step by step through all the events that unleashed the biggest freedom movement in Cuba's history since Fidel Castro's communist revolution.
The English version also comes with an epilogue that covers the details of Patria y Vida. You have probably heard that song. If not, make sure you look it up. This song has changed the history of Cuban people forever. I think you will benefit from reading this book. And it makes for a wonderful gift for those people who are looking to know the truth, for those wanting to understand more of the important events shaping the Cuban dissident movement of today. Now, as I mentioned before, I was raised in the United States. So a person like me, who was so disconnected from the Cuban day to day for so many years, for a person like me, this book helps to put everything in perspective. I really hope it's as helpful to you as it has been to me. I am so proud of this work and I really want to share it. So I'm gonna go ahead and give two copies away. The first two comments on this video in the comment section will get a copy of The Quartered of San Isidro. More than ever, we need to be focused on echoing the real voices of the real people that have suffered and even died pleading for Cuba to be a free country. Thank you so much for watching and supporting my content. I appreciate you and God bless you. See you next time. Now is my time to shine. Let's when your time comes, don't postpone it. When others doubt and out, you don't condone it. Truth be told, yourself is your toughest opponent. When your moment comes, grab hold and own it. Never let go, stand tall.